But when I was a kid, I was extremely hyper. I was really, really hyper. And actually some people would say that I still am. But uh, one of the outlets of my excessive energy was always drawing or doing something artistic. I really liked to produce art. I have an aunt uh, who is a writer and uh, she had a note piano at her home. And every time I would go to my aunt's house, I would get that piano ready, sit down and start playing. And of course, I, I didn't know how to play, so I would just sort of like investigate the notes and, you know, play with, with the keys a little bit. And uh, my aunt kind of caught, you know, that uh, attraction that I had uh, toward the instrument. And she offered my mom to move the piano to my mom's place, to my, my parents' place. And um, once my parents did, they just saw that, you know, I, it really wasn't a... Um, it really wasn't a fad, that it was something that I really was into, and um, they decided to put me in piano lessons. So I started studying piano at five, and when I was about six or seven years old, I remember watching a show on TV, on Brazilian TV, about a composer. And uh, that's when I had, you know, that eureka moment. I was like, that's what I want to do. And um, I told my parents, and they, they put me in the music theory lessons, and then later on in music composition lessons, and that's how it kind of got developed. What was so interesting about composing, it was, to me, and it still is, a lot of being a choreographer of music, if you will. I mean, you are writing the gestures that others will perform. You are sort of trying to anticipate what that sonic event will be like, and uh, for a control freak like me, that's actually something very appealing. Um, so when I'm writing music, and even back then when I was, you know, attempting at writing music when I was very young, um, the thing that really attracted me was sort of uh, the challenge of creating a map that would completely reproduce what I was hearing in my head.